Hey guys, welcome back to Holistic Home Studying with Hirsch. I'm Megan. And it has been a hectic, busy, overwhelming week, along with an emergency. No, 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 no. Don't touch. Don't touch. So I'm 30 weeks pregnant tomorrow. Um, by the time you guys see this video, I'll be further along. Whoops, sorry. Um, I don't know. Uh, last week, at 29 weeks pregnant, I took a big spill. I was uh, holding our one-year-old, Hadassah, and walking out towards our barn and fell coming down a hill onto my stomach while holding her. So, it was very scary and... No, 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 no. no. Oh my gosh. Sorry, I'm trying to undo the microphone. Um, but anyways, it was very scary, and uh, we we rushed to the um, emergency labor and delivery just to make sure that everything was okay. I was monitored for four hours and um, had blood drawn and uh, just other tests done just to make sure there was no internal bleeding or anything happening that um, was bad for me or the baby. So. I walked away out of that very, very sore, lots of bruises and scratches, but thankfully very blessed and God showed his mercy on me and I was able to walk away and our baby is still okay. The next day I uh, went to our chiropractor. She is basically our primary care doctor too. Um, and just wanted to make sure that I was realigned well because when you take a spill, especially when you have relaxant in your body as much as I do right now, uh, things can get moved around, especially when you fall. So I wanted to make sure I got that done. And she told me that I needed to be on bed rest for at least two days. I had already been on bed rest one day pretty much uh, the day right after the fall because I was so sore I could hardly get up. Um, so anyways I talked to her and um, was just I don't know I came to the realization that I have got to one be more careful so you don't have to say that in the comment section. Um, I understand that I need to be more careful and also that I have been expecting too much out of myself. So I am trying to slow down, which honestly this season now is a really good season to slow down. The rush of summer is kind of dying down. Kids are going back to school. Um, our kids are homeschooled, so that means we're about to get back into a routine of doing that. And so it's you know, a good time to slow down, but I also see things just piling up for me to do. And it's really, really hard for me to not want to get it done. Um, so I'm trying to prioritize and make sure that we get things done that one, are safe for me to do, and uh, two, are like top priority, like need to be done very soon. And so, Basically, that means just gathering stuff from the garden. I'm not pulling weeds, and the garden looks terrible. Like, it really just needs to be mowed down and started over and on. Um, my vines have just completely taken over my tomatoes. I'm hardly getting any tomatoes now because the vines have... I didn't expect this. I, I put trellises to go up and thinking that they would grow up the trellises and not up the trellises, over the trellises, and outside of the trellises. <laughs> um, so, yeah, the garden doesn't look so good. There's so many weeds in between the vines and everything. Uh, I'm still able to gather some flowers, which is really fun for me. And then, um, yeah, but the rest of it, it's just, it needs to be mowed and mulched. <laughs> so, anyways, um, I guess I was just going to tell you guys some of the things that I try to do whenever I feel overwhelmed is one, 
get organized or declutter. That is a big thing for me. Um, I get super overwhelmed if my house is a disaster. So first thing that I started with um, once I got out of bed rest was going ahead and starting with a kid's room. It's a small room and if I can get that started and decluttered and organized, it helps with the rest of the house because that means the kids aren't bringing as many toys out into the living area for me to clean up. And then um, I've, I've got a donation box that we just keep putting stuff in that I don't want anymore or I don't feel like cleaning up because if I don't, if I, I'm, I'm trying to take inventory and not have too much in my house because that gets overwhelming. And so if I can just do the basic things, you know, sweeping, mopping, doing the dishes, uh, making our bed, just keeping things tidy and not having a whole bunch of clutter to deal with as well. Sometimes she helps, yeah. Then I'm able to uh, not be so overwhelmed and it just feels almost relaxing to do that thing, those things. Another thing that I do I like to do when I'm overwhelmed is something fun, whether it's painting or uh, putting flower arrangements together. I really enjoy that. Um, those types of things, being hands-on, not not just busy work, but just being hands-on and creating and just having fun with something really helps me to calm down, relax, and not be so overwhelmed. But I cannot do that until my house is clean. So this is kind of in order of how I'm able to beat the overwhelm. Um, I guess one thing that I do is try to recruit help. Now, I have been trying to train up my kids and teach them responsibility, but they're still five and a half, four, one, and then one on the way. So they can't do as much that would be super, super helpful, but they can do a lot of little things that's very helpful, cleaning up after themselves. Um, when I got... Yeah. So they can clean up after themselves. Um, if I am good at decluttering and keeping their toys at a minimum, it's a lot less for them to keep up with. So they are. E it's easier for them to go in there and do what they're supposed to do. Now, um, they're also good at helping me with supper or uh, going to get things, uh, running errands around our farm. And uh, getting eggs. Yeah, getting eggs. Um, they're good at switching the laundry out for me. And that's the good stuff, yeah. yeah. They're learning how to wash windows and vacuum and sweep and mop and things like that. Now. I'm still, they're still at the age where I'm having to go behind them and perfect it, I guess you would say, um, even though I'm not perfect, but just go back behind them. But that still cuts out a lot of the work for me to do because they've got most of the mess cleaned up by the time I get there. So that's been very helpful. Um, reaching out to church family has been very helpful. My husband has been my number one help, and thankfully he has a job that I mean, he owns his own business, so he's able to stay home if he's needed. He did get behind on on several things last week just because he had to stay home with me, and there was not much that he could do. Uh, but I'm just super thankful that he is able and willing to stay home with me and take care of me whenever I am falling downhill. <laughs> yeah, whenever I need him. So, uh, another thing that I like to do whenever I feel overwhelmed is create like a romantic picture in my house. Um, which, yeah, I like the house clean. But uh, lighting candles or setting up the table for dinner and making it really pretty or uh, taking a hot bath, reading a book. Uh, last week, whenever I was on bed rest, I would get in the hot bath and just sit there and read a book and I fell asleep twice. So, I mean, I think that my body and my soul and my emotions just needed 
a break and to be loved on and taken care of and not have to be the one behind taking care of everybody all the time. Those are just a few things that I do in a season of overwhelm to slow down so that I can recover and then be the mom that I'm supposed to be, be the wife I'm supposed to be, be the woman I'm supposed to be. It's easy. I am one of like the go-getters, I guess you would say. It's really easy for me to keep pushing myself and keep going and going and going and going and never actually taking a rest. So I'm trying to change things and being and become intentional of what I'm doing and resting and I mean, biblically, it's important for us to rest too. So it's not just a crazy world where you have to continue to to go all the time and running off of four or five hours of sleep and, and just expect to, to be the best when you never rest. So on, I'm trying to be more intentional about resting. So biblically, on the seventh day, God rested after the day of creation. And then in the New Testament, Jesus talks about the Sabbath being made for man and not man for the Sabbath. It was not a day that you had to really worry about keeping all the religious rules. It was a day that God gave us to make sure that we were being rested up and recuper recouping for the week. And uh, it, it really does allow you to get more stuff done because you have the energy to do the things that you need to get done whenever you rest. So I'm trying to be more intentional about that, really studying up on how we can make a Sabbath work for us um, because it does seem almost impossible in today's culture to take the whole day off. And so I've been just looking at what does a Sabbath really look like and what does it mean to rest uh, for that 24 hours and so I will be bringing you guys more about that as I learn about it and as we incorporate it into our lives. So this past Saturday my family and I did super relaxing things that involved the whole family and it was just a really nice day of rest. So for me it was um, I am not one, I mean, I had been in the bed for three days and not hardly hadn't been out of the house except to see the doctor. Um, I've been in the bed or in the tub or eating. Like that was my rotation. I wasn't really doing much else. And um, so Saturday was my first day out of the house after three days. And we went to our local YMCA and Vine and I got to work out together. We dropped the kids off at childcare, and it wasn't like a um, an extreme workout or anything. I was doing super lightweight. He was doing his thing. We were just like right next to each other, and uh, we got to talk some. And then we went and picked up the kids from Child Watch. We went to uh, swim, and that felt great on my body just to take a load off and float there and just kind of move my joints and my body, my muscles in the water without all the extra weight on it. So that was nice. Uh, then I don't typically like to go to the grocery store because it's just me and three kids and I'm pregnant and that can be a little overwhelming and stressful. But when my husband there, um, it's it can be kind of relaxing that we, we get to kind of browse and pick out the best foods for our family and just kind of cooperate together and make really good meal plan ideas and so I really enjoyed that and then we came home we had a great supper and I read um, painted just a few things like that that I really enjoy doing and didn't have to worry I didn't have to worry about the um, house being a disaster because we've been out of the house and so we just picked up a little bit and just cleaned up after ourselves and it was just so nice for me to just kind of rest and not be so busy with all the things that you have to do. So 
I guess I'm just trying to encourage other moms that are super busy and overwhelmed and stressed that you're not the only one and there is stuff that we can do about it. So I'm also started um, my chiropractor for us hey guys she started me on some other supplements or actually increased a lot of my supplements that I'm supposed to be taking already with pregnancy I'm really bad about remembering to take stuff so um, she told me my heart was super weak right now and after a muscle test it was at a 2 and it's supposed to be at a 12 so that was pretty pretty jarring and so we're doing things to um, taking supplements and doing things to strengthen my heart so that I don't go into preterm labor and I'm not stressed and things like that so a few of those things were um, taking supplements and then also she told me to sing or come gargle or gag myself it stimulates the vagus nerve which strengthens the heart and so I'm not really into gagging or gargling so I've been trying to hum and sing which on Sundays is great because we sing with our church and isn't that cool that God created worship as um, a way of pleasing him but also strengthening our heart and uh, like physically and spiritually it's pretty awesome so I have been trying to incorporate that more into my day I love to sing I've been singing my entire life so I've just been doing that more randomly throughout the day and um, so that's nice I hope that if you are an overwhelmed mom you got some help from this some support know that I am with you and I, I, be, I will be praying for you. And uh, I would love and desire your prayers as well as we close in on the birth of this baby that we would have. Um, we're still planning on a home birth and that everything would go well and both me and the baby would be healthy. And yeah, we would carry it a full term. So I will let you guys go. And I will see you in the next video. Bye. Why do I have to put it right there? So I can move. Oh. There you go. Okay. <laughs> Silly Molly. It has been a rainy week. A rainy summer, hasn't it? Mommy. A really rainy one. It was it was raining so hard that the creek overflowed. And, our, and mommy had to, and mommy had to move our cat named Daisy. Bye. Bye. See you in the next video.